Shout out to everybody that is watching online. We are in week three of our series that we are calling It's on my shirt and it's about to be on the screen. What is the series called, everybody? It is Faith Walkers. We are Faith Walkers. And if you missed the first two weeks, if you're watching online, just click right over here. You're going to see the link to this whole series for you right here. But for those that are in the building, I'm going to give you a very, 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 very quick recap of weeks one and weeks two. So put it on the screen for me real quick, Adassa. We learned in week number one uh, that our theme scripture is for we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. That's why we are faith walkers. Let me show them the next one here. Week one, we learned that what is faith? Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. That's what faith is. If you think about your, when you were a kid, when your birthday was coming, you knew you were going to get something. You were excited about it. You anticipated it. You, just, you knew some of the things, but you didn't know it all. But you had anticipation. That's faith. So when, when we look at God, we say, God, whatever your word says, we're going to act like you're telling the truth. We're going to walk in that. Even if we may not understand it, we trust in you. We also learn that faith is a lifestyle because the righteous live by faith. It's not a feeling. It's not just a mindset. It is a way that which we live. We live like God is telling the truth. That's how we live. And then in week two, we learn that our focus determines our footsteps. What are you looking at? We talked about Peter. When Jesus, he, they saw Jesus, the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water. And Peter was like, Jesus, if that's you walking on our problem, tell me to walk towards you. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was a walking miracle, walking on the water. But the moment he took his eyes off Jesus and put them on his problems, he started to sink. And it's the same for us. When our focus is on Jesus, not that we're not going to have hard times. But God will walk with us as we keep our eyes on him through those hard times. And then we also learn that Jesus is not far from you. Because as soon as Peter took his eyes off Jesus and he sank, guess who was right by him? Jesus. And he pulled him out of the water. Because that's how good God is. So we talked about what are you looking at. Today, though, we're going to talk about a different sense. It's not just looking, but it's another part that comes with faith. And that is listening, listening to God. How do we listen to God? Our theme scripture for today is Romans chapter 10, verse 17, that says this. So faith comes from what? Hearing or listening and hearing through the word of Christ. Let's pray real quick. Heavenly Father, thank you for today's message. God, my hope and my prayer for every person here under the sound of my voice is, God, that you open up our eyes for our understanding, open up our ears that we may, be, we, may be hear, we may hear from you. And I pray that we won't just be hearers of your word, we will actually apply it and be doers of it today so that we can walk by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about listening to God. Now, here's what I want everybody to understand. When I'm talking about hearing, I know some may say, well, not everybody can hear. Some people are hard of hearing or they may be deaf. Well, when you see hearing in the Bible, what that is actually talking about is receiving and understanding information. So you can still hear the word of God even if you are deaf because you can receive and understand God's word whether that's through Braille, through sign language, or through other visual aids that can come along. So I just need everybody to understand that when we talk about hearing, we're not just talking about you hearing my voice literally, but it's how are you receiving and understanding that information. For those of you that can hear, yes, it is about hearing. But if you can't, you can still receive and understand what God is saying to you. And here's what, when I read that scripture, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I have prepared this whole message, and I'm, I'm going to let y'all in on my, my process during the week. As I prepare these messages, typically I try to run them by at least one person. So when you hear me preach it, this is not the first time I'm preaching the message. Sometimes it's the second, third, some weeks, if I'm just struggling, 
It may be the fifth, sixth, seventh time I didn't preach this message because I'm trying to get it in me and make sure that it's easy for us to be able to understand. So I ran this message by my wife yesterday and, and, and I had this whole message and I was like, I'm ready. And she was like, well, it's good, but I don't know if it's answering the question that a lot of people might have. And I was like, what is that? And that is, how do we effectively hear from God? And how do I know that it's God speaking and not me speaking? And so now the way that y'all, are, you can, if you can't hear them on, on, online, there's a lot of response. So it, this is all this is telling me is something that I hate admitting. But my wife is right again. <laughs> She's right again. The way that they're responding, this is what we want to, we want to know. How do we effectively hear from God. Because the first thing I need everybody to understand is this, is that we serve a God that wants to communicate with you. He is not a silent God that's up in heaven just going, well, sorry, (laughs) you'll figure it out. No, we serve a God that wants a relationship with you. And when there's a relationship It's hard to have a relationship without some form of communication. Now, not all of it has to be verbal, because when you're really close to somebody, there is some nonverbal communication that you can give that you, whether it's your spouse, your your best friend, your cousin, there are certain things that you all do that you all, there there, there are certain looks that you can give each other, and y'all know exactly what that means. I remember growing up in school, I had two best friends, and like where, wherever we went, we was always together. But I always knew if something was funny or if somebody tripped and fell, if some, something happened funny in the room, I could not look at them. <laughs> because if I looked at them, they were going to give me a look, and I was going to blurt out laughing, and I was going to be the one to get in trouble. Every single time. I'll never forget this one guy in, in the cafeteria tripped, fell. The teacher starts looking to see who's going to laugh. And I'm like, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. And I happened to look at one of my friends, and he went. <laughs> that look set it off. That, but that was communication, right? There's other forms of communication that aren't necessarily verbal, right? But you know, like, brothers, if I see you and I do like this, what does that mean? Did I say it? But you knew. If I see you and I know you, I'm like, and I keep going. You may point back. Or if I may give you the, the head nod. <laughs> or I chuck up the deuces. And you, so there's commun- And that's what God wants to have with us. But here's the thing. If I don't know you, there's certain communication that the only way you're going to know what it is, is we've got to have a what? Relationship. I can't just chuck up the deuces at every dude. Because in some cultures, you throw this up, that's offensive. Like I, I don't know what culture it is, but like if you give them the thumbs up, that is highly offensive. But you, the only way you know that is if you are in what? relationship. You know the culture. You know what's going on. And that's what God wants to have with us. We serve a God that wants to communicate with you and he wants you to know how he's speaking to you. So that's what I want to show us today. How do we listen to God? How do we become effective listeners to God? So what I want to do is I'm going to show you a lot of scriptures today. If I put a scripture up here, if you're not taking physical notes, take a picture of the scripture so you have it with you throughout the week so you can always go back and listen and study this because here's what I need everybody to understand. It is my responsibility to, as your pastor, to give you the information. But it is not my responsibility to live it out in your life. I got to live this out for my life. You got to live it out for your life. And so all I'm trying to do today is equip you because we're an equipped and empowering church. Equip you so that you can better know how to hear God's voice. 
So let me show you a passage in the Old Testament where there was a guy who heard from God. And what he did after hearing from God is something that we all must start to do. So let's go to Genesis chapter 12. This is chapter, uh, chapter, one, uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through, I believe I'm going to get through 9 here. No. Yeah, 4. 1 through 4. The Lord had said to Abram. So let's pause right here. God is talking to a guy named Abram. Now, before this, in chapter 11 of Genesis, we get a short little genealogy of who he is. We find out who his brother is who his father was, who his grandfather was, but that's all that we know. We don't know particularly how this dude, Abram, knew or had a relationship with God. That's not what's presented to us. But what we do know is what? The Lord did what? He spoke to him. He spoke to Abram. And he said, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. Now, time out here. When you read the Bible, sometimes you got to slow down and read the Bible. God just spoke to Abram, said, leave everybody that you know and love and go to a land I'm going to show you. Maybe you missed it. Did he tell him where to go? He just said, go. Then I'll show you. Now, I don't know about you all. If one of you all say, hey, go and I'm going to tell you where you're going, I'm going to be like, no, nah, bro, like, where am I going? Tell me that so I can have confidence because I don't know. I can get in the car if I go left. Do I need to go right? But this is what God did. He spoke to Abram and said, just go. Now, again, we don't actually know how he had a relationship with God. But we do know that he must have had one because look at the next verse. Verse is, God gives him a promise. I'll make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make you famous and I will be a blessing to, you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Next verse. Remember that, that's the promise. But verse number four, so Abram departed as the Lord instructed. Lot went with him. Abram, Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He went. He left. But how did he know that was God speaking to him? Was that just not a, maybe he didn't have like a bad pizza? Woke up? We don't actually know. Some will say that Culturally, at that time, everyone knew that there was some type of a higher power. Others will say maybe God showed up to him in a vision. We don't really know. What we do know is we find out later in the book of Matthew that Abram, who later became Abraham, was a descendant of Adam, and they show you the whole genealogy. So maybe what we can think, figure is he knew about God because this had been passed down through the generations. But Scriptures don't actually tell us how we know that he knew that it was God. But the only thing that we do know is his response to when God spoke to him. Because that is what the Lord wants every person to understand. Is that many times you may not always know, but how you respond is what God is looking at in your life. How do we respond? Do you always know that it's God? We're going to talk about that because I want to help us. Because I know the Lord is speaking to many of you all. And some of you all, you just don't recognize it. Others of you all, you know God is speaking, but you're like, well, it, that kind of feels like me, though. And then others of you, you know without a shadow of a doubt, you just like, I ain't listening because I don't like it. <laughs> be honest let's just keep it real so I want to talk to all of you as well as those of you who you know the voice of God now 
because you have spent time with him. And you're living and being a faith walker because you know the difference between what is God and what's not. The first thing that I want everybody to understand is that how do we know when God is speaking? The first thing is that you must open your own heart to God's guidance. It has to be a desire for you to want to know God. If you want no parts of him, you don't want him whatsoever. He is not going to make you want him. Because that's not a relationship. He's going to show himself to you. But when you want to him, when you open your heart to him and his guidance, he will begin to speak to you. It always starts with desire. Everybody say desire. desire. This walk with the Lord always starts with, I want to know God. We, all we know about Abram is that there must have been a desire for the things of God. Because God was looking like, I'm a, did you see the promise? I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless the whole world through you. Now, one, that's, that's a big responsibility. I would be like, I mean, like, uh, like everybody? Like, you're going to bless everybody because of me. That means, so that means you're watching everything I do to him. Yes. Yes. But we see that there's some type of a desire. Here's the scripture that I want everybody to see. This is God speaking to us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 1. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Desire them. Want them. If you want them, I'm going to give them to you. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. There has to be a desire, and if there's a, a desire, and you're like, okay, God, I want to hear from you, I'm listening. He'll start to speak. Now, how he speaks to every person may be a little bit different, but I guarantee you this. He speaks to everyone that wants him. He does. I'm going to show you this, okay? So here's what we see. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 12. Verses 5 through 7. Think I have this? So all we know is what? Abram did what? He went. He did what God told him. Now watch what happens. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up a camp beside the Oak of Morah. At that time, the area was inhabited by the Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. So, what did we see? God spoke. Did he tell him where to go? But did he still obey? When he did it, then God gave him the next step. So here's what I need everybody to understand. When God is speaking, oftentimes, not often, I don't, I don't know if I can ever find this in Scripture, where God lays out the whole thing to you. More often than not, he may give you one step. He might give you the second and the third step, but he's not going to give you everything. But are you willing to listen and take the first step? Because then he can give you the next one. That's why this whole verse, this whole story about Abram, it doesn't tell us about the relationship. It just tells us his response to the relationship. Oftentimes, your response your faith walking, you're acting like God telling the truth. That in and of itself a lot lets God know, you. this person wants me. Now I'm going to give them more. Because he got there and he was like, this land. But how did he know it was going to be that land? He didn't. He just went with the last thing he heard God say. And for those of you, because I'm going to get to those who don't know yet, but those of you who know when God is speaking to you, and you may be saying, well, I don't know what God is saying to me. I ain't hearing God right now. What's the last thing he told you? If you haven't done the last thing, stop looking for the next thing. You've already heard him. But you're, you're here. If Abram would have stayed where he was at, 
he would have never got to where God was going to bless him. And that's where many of you all are. Again, I'm talking to those of you who you know the voice of the Lord. You know when he's speaking. Do the last thing he told you to do. I'll never forget. This is about four years ago. I heard the Lord say to me, move back to St. Louis. Talk to your mother about becoming the pastor of the next church, of the, of the, of the church your father and her started. I don't know about that, Lord. Do it. I sat on that for about three months, about two months before I even told my wife. Then I sat on it another three months, and I was like, well, God, when? When you want me to go? When you want me to, how you want me to do it? Heard nothing. For months, I finally go talk to leadership at the uh, other uh, life church that I, where I was working at. I talked to one of my leaders, and I'm like, God told me to go, but I ain't heard anything yet. I don't know when, I don't know how. And he was like, well, maybe because you're supposed to go. And then you'll get the next step. And I'm like, ah, I, wanted the, I wanted the whole picture. So I told leadership, hey, I think I need to step off the team here. Okay. Days after that, God showed us when, when to go. But I never would have got that if I wouldn't have taken, gone to the last thing he told me. So many of you all, you are struggling and wrestling. God ain't talking to me. God, you used to always talk to me. And God's like, I already talked to you. I love you. I told you what to do. Act like I'm telling the truth. You heard me, not step. Not step. Now, Abraham responded in faith. Later on in Scripture, in the book of Romans chapter 4, everybody said Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. We see a little bit more of a glimpse in the Abraham story as well as in Hebrews chapter 11, the, the hall of faith. Abraham, which his name later became, the Bible says that God called him righteous because he acted like God was telling the truth. Because he heard and obeyed, even when it didn't make sense. And how do the righteous live, everybody? By what? Yep. But where did it start? What he heard. It didn't start with the step. It started with him under, receiving and understanding what God said. That, ladies and gentlemen, you want to know where faith begins? When you hear what God has said. Then you can step in faith. If you have not heard God, then you cannot step in faith. Because faith comes by re listening, receiving and understanding what God has said. Now, Oh, there may be some of you going, what, how do I know that God is speaking? There was some, because I, I just talked to those of you who you already kind of know God's voice. Now I want to talk to those of you who are like, I don't know when God is speaking or not. Well, there's, leads me to my second point, which is this, that the way to hear God's voice is to meditate on his word for direction. So we see that Abram heard the Lord spoke to him. How did God speak to him? I don't know. It doesn't say it was audible. It doesn't say it was a burning bush like he did with Moses. It doesn't say it was in a whirlwind like he did with the, or a pillar of fire like he did with the Israelites. It just said God spoke to him. I don't know exactly how. But what I do know is that every person living today you and I have access to something that Abram did not. The written word of God. We have it. And when you meditate on that word, when you begin to read, the, it's literally the Bible, God's word. Everything that I'm saying right now, YouTube is going to make a transcription of everything that I'm saying. That's what the Bible is. It is God's transcription 
for us. You want to know how do I know if I'm hearing from God? If it's in the Bible, you're hearing from God. And when you read the word of God and you meditate, and the word meditate doesn't just mean, hum, that's not what it means. The word meditate means you, you say it, you think about it, you say it again, you think about it some more, you say it again. And it, it's just this constant thing. That's biblical meditation. Biblical meditation is not clearing your mind. It is filling your mind with the word of God. So there are those of you in here that God will speak. You may hear God's audible voice. It may sound like his audible voice. There are those of you in here, you may never hear it that way. But don't ever say, I don't know what God is saying, because everyone has access, and here, at least in this room, to God's written word. And if you want to know God's character, read the Bible. If you want to know what God thinks about something, read it in the Bible. That's why this is so important. What we're doing right here, right now, when we gather together, you're hearing the written word of God spoken out loud. Your responsibility this week is to take what I'm saying, match it up with what is actually in the Bible, and then live it out. But every person here, when you read the Bible, God is speaking to you. So, well, well, pastor, how do I know this? Psalm 119, 105. Look at what it says. It says, the, your word, God's word, is a lamp to, your, to guide your feet, faith walker, and a light for your path. If you don't know what to do, maybe you ain't been in the word. And here's what I know. There are a lot of folks who've been saved for a long time. Gave your life to Christ when you were a kid or whenever. But we don't make this a daily discipline. So I'm married to my wife, right? I would never go days and weeks and months and years without speaking to her and spending time with her, right? Relationship. I got certain friends. We may go days or here, but, but like I, my best friend, we talk almost every day on Marco Polo. So, man, what's going on? What's good? There's communication, but it's consistent. Could you imagine if I went days, weeks, and months, and I'm not talking about like if I was in the, 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 the armed forces and things, but like I'm here and we in the same house and, and for years I don't look at her. She collecting dust. <laughs> I don't talk to her. But that is what we do with the word of God. I can know things about her just by spending time with her. You can know things about me by just kick, kicking it with me. Hey, man, where'd you go to school? Tell me about your family. Hey, man, what's your favorite sports team? You only know that when you're in proximity to me. And you do that over time. You won't know everything about me today. You'll get like a little bit today. But if we keep kicking it every day and every day, there's very little I don't know about her. There's very little she don't know about me because we spent time. I know her character because I've been with her. I've seen her. I know my mom's character. I, I lived. I, she raised me. I grew up in her house. I watched how she lived. I understand what she likes and what she doesn't like. Because I spent time with them. Some of you all I just met for the first time today. I don't know your character. I just met you. <laughs> they tell me you're a good person. <laughs> you look nice. You smell good. Got a nice smile. But I don't really know your character. I don't know if you tell me you're going to do something if you're really going to do it. But the more I hang with you, the more we talk, the more I hear from you, now I start to understand, oh, okay, yeah, Markel, if he say he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Yeah. Oh, no, no, let me tell you. 
Markel, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, Markel, he don't, he don't like seafood. How you know that? Oh, man, because we went to eat. Spent time with him. He didn't want the shrimp. I was like, you don't want the shrimp? Let me get the shrimp. He's like, I'm allergic to the shrimp. I won't eat no shrimp around. But that only happens because he told me. When you meditate on the word of God, guess what happens? I'm getting to know God's character. I start to realize, man, he don't like sin. But when people return from it and say, Lord, forgive me for that, this dude will bring you back in and forgive you like that. And I see it over. I, I, people always, a lot of people will say, man, God in the Old Testament is different than the God in the New Testament. I would go, mm, not really. Not really. The, the, the only difference is that Jesus did all the work that they had to do extra work for in the Old Testament. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the Old Testament, here's what would happen. God would tell the folks, hey, worship me. Don't worship those other gods. You worship those other gods, it's going to get real bad for you, and it's going to be on sight. I don't play like that. I don't play like that. And what would happen? They would, they would worship him. God, you're good. But we really like these other gods. We really like them. I told y'all, don't do that. Don't do it. If you do it, I gotta, I'm got i going to give you over to him. And that's what would happen. But he would always say, if you turn back to me, I will bring you back. And it happens over and over. If you read through the, all the, 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 the Torah, the first five books, then you start getting into Judges, and then you start getting into the, the Kings and Chronicles, you start seeing this same pattern of God as a loving God. He just don't like you worshiping other gods above him including yourself. But when you turn back, you're his child. He brings you in. So I see his character because I've been reading it over and over. And if he did it for them nasty, dusty folks, he'll do it for this nasty, dusty dude right here. But I know that because I've meditated on the word. Here's what else you need to know. So, so, so listen, we're talking about how do I know I'm hearing from God? Because you're spending time with his word. This is what God, and guess what? In the Bible, just like he gave Abraham, he gave you, there are promises that are available for you and me. Promises. He promises he will provide. He promises he heals. He promises that if you turn from your wicked ways, he will forgive you and cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. These are promises, but you don't know it if you don't spend time with him. He's talking to you every day. God is like, I'm ready to talk. I'm ready to talk. Just open me up. I'm going to talk to you today. But we go, well, social media. And you got everybody else talking to you. All these self-help people, you need to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you grind and you hustle and you do more and you make more money and you're going to make more money and then you're going to be a gazillionaire by the time you're 31. If you start all of this right now, Jenny, you're listening to all of this, but you're not listening to the one who literally says this in Joshua 1, 8. Show them this, Adassa. Study this book, the word of God. Continually meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. When you obey, you're walking by faith. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Isn't that powerful? You want to succeed in everything you do? God's like, I got it for you. I got the answers for you right here. But we like, you ain't got the answers, Sway. And God's like, no, I do have the answers. Just open up the Bible, and I got the answers for you. I'm ready to talk to you. But you're not listening because you won't open. God is speaking to you every single day. Will you listen? By reading and meditating. Here's the other thing I know. Show them the next scripture for me here to ask. John 10, 27. Jesus said these words. My sheep Listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. 
Bible says that Jesus is the good shepherd. He's a good shepherd. If you know shepherds and sheep, a good shepherd guides the sheep and keeps them from going down in the ditches, from going towards wolves. And he says that my sheep know my voice. When that, those sheep are around that shepherd long enough, the shepherd will go, no! Nope! And they get back in line. If that sheep falls into a ditch, good shepherd reaches down with his staff, pulls that sheep out, and they get back to going. Here's my question for you. Are you his sheep? Because if you're his sheep, amen. She said, I am. Amen. <laughs> if you're his sheep, you follow him. You know his voice because you spend time with him. Will you spend time with him? The more you know his character and his promises, you'll start to know what's him and what's not him. You'll start to know what's you and what's God. Here's how I know. More time you spend in God's word, he'll tell you, vengeance is mine. Don't repay evil for evil. Repay evil with good. I'll take care of it. That's God. You says, mm, let me cuss him out. Just a little bit. I ain't going to say the real big one. I'm just going to hit him with one. Let him know how I really feel. Is that me or is that God? God, you sure? I mean, because, can I? Right? You'll know that because you spent time with him. You'll start to learn what's you and what's not. Now, there are other times where things aren't as clear, right? Like, God, do I apply, apply for this job or that job? God, do I date this person or that person? Right? <laughs> How do I know? How do I know? Well, that's when it comes to the next part. Because there's a third part. What do we do? First, you have to have a desire for the things of God, right? Open your heart. Secondly, you've got to meditate on his word. Right? For his guidance. That's how you know you hear him. The third one, this is the hardest one for us, for many of us, is this. You seek God in prayerful stillness. Some of y'all so uncomfortable right now. That was 10 seconds of stillness. Many times we don't know what to do because we're inundated with so much noise. We always got some music playing. We always listening to this podcast. We always talking to that person. We don't like silence. But more often than not, God speaks and gives you clarity You have to learn how to quiet yourself so that you can hear from him. Psalms 46 and 10 says this, Be still and know that I am God. Be still. God, do I do this job or that job? Be still. Just listen. Sometimes, God is not going to tell you exactly what to do. Sometimes it's just understanding the scripture that says, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of the Lord. God, I'm going to apply for these 12 positions. <laughs> apply for something. <laughs> Don't apply for nothing and be like, God, provide me. No, 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 apply. Right? But how do I know which one to take? God will... Quiet. God, which one? Sometimes it may be the one that pays more. He'll lead you. It may not always be the most lucrative one. 
It might be the job that gives you the most mental peace. It may be the job that opens up an opportunity for you to come to church on Sunday instead of having to work and grind on Sunday. It may be the job that allows you to come home at 5 p.m. every day so you can be with your children who need you at this time. It may be the one that maybe for a season you got to work a little bit more so you can pay off that debt. But how do I know? Sometimes it's just knowing him and knowing if you don't hear a definite no, or a definite yes, God, I apply, I trust you because you said you will provide for me, I'm going to go with this one. Here's what's good about God. Even if you think it was the wrong decision, he's a restoring God. You may have taken a little detour, but if you are following him as a faith walker, that road you took will lead back to him. Right? I remember I had an opportunity between two jobs. One was teaching. One was going into full-time ministry. And I didn't know. Because they both were paying about the same amount, which at the time wasn't much. <laughs> and on one hand, I had a, a, a principal from another school that was like, hey, I will actually pay for you to go to grad school to get your master's in education. So I'm like, okay, that sounds real good. The other one was like, well, we're not, we're not going to do that, but it will allow you to be in full-time ministry, which I was like, I don't know. And I didn't know. I didn't know. Both were good options. God, which one is you? Could it be that they both were? Have we ever considered that? That had I gone the education route, God would have still been there with me. Would have blessed it. And I still may have ended up right where I am today. Because it's called a faith what? Walk. It's not called a I know it all walk. I didn't know. But I trusted God enough that his promise that he would provide for me and walk with me, that I went through the door of ministry. I chose full time. I was like, I'll do it for a year, God. I'll do it for a year. That was 12 years ago. I'm still in full time ministry. See, you, do you see what I'm talking about? So sometimes it's, we always want God to speak exactly. God, tell me which one to do. He didn't do that with Abraham. Abraham, he said, Go where I'm going to show you. And Abra your response to hearing the little bit you've heard, how will you respond? Because I need you to I don't know this as I get ready to close. So many of you all, you already are hearing from God. you just getting caught up with a decision. Step. It's faith walk. It's not faith and watch. I'm a faith watcher. Just going to watch those who have faith. Because I like watching them. Ooh, look at them. God blessing them because they stepped out the boat and walked by faith. I heard God, but I'm still right here. I'm not moving. You will never experience the promises of God until you take the step. You're already hearing if you're giving your life to Jesus because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and will speak to you. Let me show you real quick because so many times we want God to talk to us like this. Jamar, go make a left turn here and I will take you to the job that you have always been looking for, 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 for. That's what we think God, that's what we want God to do. Yell at me. I want it to be so clear that I hear it and I'm like, the voice of God blowing you away. That is rarely how he ever talks. Let me show you. Remember, because you got to be still. We got to come to a place of stillness so that we can hear from him. This is 1 Kings chapter 19. It's a guy named Elijah. It's a prophet. God said, go and out and stand before me on the mountain. The Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by in a mighty windstorm and hit the mountain loud. 
It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. It was so loud. God, I'm trying to hear you in this whirlwind. That ain't God talking. He's not talking that way. After the wind, there was an earthquake, rumbling, shaking. Oh, that's got my attention. This must be God. The Lord was not in the earthquake. Next, next verse. After the earthquake, there was a fire. Oh, this must be it, because you talked to Moses through the burning bush. You're going to talk to me that same way. <laughs> but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. Some versions say a still, small voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in the cloak and went out and stood at the entrance and a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? You see, it's not the noise where you're going to hear from God. The quietness. When's the last time, or have you ever just been quiet so that he can speak to you? We want loud, 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 loud. And God's like, And here's what I love. I heard somebody say this once. They actually says, God often doesn't shout because he's close to us. If I'm right by you and I'm close, Elder Terry, I'm not going to say, Elder Terry, unless you're falling asleep, which he wasn't. But if I'm close, I'm going to be like, hey, bro, Elder often how God is speaking to you. But are you quiet enough to hear him? Because he's going to speak through his word. He's going to speak to you sometimes just like this, where you can hear him. Sometimes it's just a knowing in your heart. You're like, this ain't me. There's no way I would have ever thought about that. But I just feel like I'm supposed to do this. And it lines up with scripture. It's not leading you into sin. It's not leading you away from the Lord. But you're like, I feel like I'm supposed to do this. I have no, I can't tell you why, but I feel like I'm supposed to bless this person financially. And this is my last $10. But God want me to, come on, Lord. You know your brother. You know I'm down to like, I'm my gas tank on E. Wipe me down. Like, that's where I'm at, Lord. And God's like, give them your last 10 you know that ain't you, because you know good and well, I need gas. So let me tell you, let me tell you who that's not. That is not the devil. The devil is not going to tell you to bless somebody. The devil is going to tell you to look out for you and you only. Take from them, not give. But you only know that if you are still before the Lord and you understand his character. So what do we do? We know we have a desire for the things of God. We meditate on his word. We learn to be still. But how do I actually, when I leave here today, pastor, how, does this, how do I actually live this out? Let me help you. I've talked about this before. But I like to talk about this a few times during the year because I just want to bring us back and center us with the Lord. How do we effectively do this? We do it, we, it's simple. When you were walking across the street as a kid, what did your parent, the parent told you to do three things before you crossed that street? What do you do? Say it. And what was the last one? Listen. You stop, you look. You can't just look. You got to listen. Because sometimes you look, there's no car coming. And all of a sudden, stop! same thing that we do. Let me show you real quick. Put it on the screen for me, Hadassah. Something that I call the 555. Five, five. I, I actually call it the 10, 10, 10. But I'm going to make it even more minute because I know we got some folks that maybe you're just starting off. So I'm going to call it the 555 five, five, where you stop, you look, and you listen. What do I mean? Five minutes. You're going to read the word of God. Now, this is actually a little bit out of order. So this is actually the looking part. I'm going to look at the word of God. For five minutes, I'm going to stop and I'm going to, I'm going to pray 
Maybe I'm going to pray based off of what I just read. And the last part is for five minutes, I'm going to listen. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to let God do the speaking. Maybe he'll speak to you through the word you just read. Maybe he'll actually, you'll start to hear something. But you stop, you look, and you listen. Five minutes. And you literally start off by setting your timer. I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. I'm going to read my Bible. I, I can read for five minutes. I can pray for five minutes. And I can listen to five minutes. Now, I need you to know this right now. The hardest one out of all of these is going to be the listening part. Because that five minutes is going to seem like two hours the first time you do it. The first time I had a pastor friend challenge me on this, and I did 10, 10, 10. I was like, oh, yeah, I can read God's word all day. Did it. Then I was able to, I was like, oh, I can pray. I can pray for my mom. I can pray for my wife. I can pray for my kids. I can pray for my church. I can pray for the community. I can do that. But when I had to get silent, wait a minute, what? For how long? Ten minutes. And I remember I'm sitting there and I'm like this. And I look at my phone, 10 seconds have passed. <laughs> Five seconds has passed. What? It was a long time because, and it was difficult because I had not quieted myself in so long. I'm going to tell you, it took a long time before I actually got, because my mind started racing. I'm thinking about all the things I got to do that day. And I'm like, oh, man, I forgot to take out the trash. Oh, man. Oh, man, I forgot to call such and such back. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Okay, okay. Oh, man, I wonder, did I close the door last night? Is my car locked? I need to go. Your mind is going to go all the, I'm telling you now. I'm trying to prepare you. Your mind is going to go all of these places. But you discipline yourself to do this. Eventually for me, I got to a place where I wasn't hearing all of that. And all I was thinking about was what I had just read in the Bible. God, thank you. You told Abraham to go and he went. And you, prom you had promises for him because he was obedient. Now that doesn't always mean financial. <laughs> Many times we jump there. The promises were that you would be with him. You were for him. And so I'm thinking, God, you're for me. My mind was still. And then there were days, y'all, where I actually, was it the audible voice? I don't know. But I started hearing God. Me being here today, it's because I was spending time with the Lord, and it was quiet, and he could speak to me. And sometimes he's not just going to speak to you when it's quiet. I'll never forget when the Lord told me, told, told me to move, move back here, it was in a church service. And I'm sitting, and I'm like, where did that come from? I was like, time for you to go back home. Okay, I know that's not me. I told my parents in 1999, I'll come back to visit, but I ain't living back in the SDL no more. So this can't be me. Devil? No, nah, we ain't cool like that. Lord? And I kept hearing it again and again because I had trained myself to be still before him. You want to hear from God? Desire. Meditate on his word. Get still before him. He's always speaking, but are you listening? He blesses those that listen. So many of you all, God's already been speaking to you. You just don't like what he's saying. Or you don't want to hear him. But he's speaking. And if we're going to be faith walkers, and we're going to walk in the promises of God, we've got to know how to hear him. And everybody can hear him through the word. So everybody stand to your feet. We're going to worship God before we go. But before we worship, I just want to, I want to give you your homework for this week. Show them the next screen, Adassa. This week, in your five, 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 for five minutes, read Romans chapter four. I didn't read it here today, but I gave you a little bit of a glimpse into it because it's going to talk to you about Abraham's faith. And it's gonna, you're going to read a scripture in verse 21 that says, Abraham was fully persuaded that God was able to do what he promised. So you read it. 
in your prayer time. Pray that God helps you to know his voice. And then after five minutes, listen to God. There are promises that he has for you. He is faithful that he will accomplish those things. But you've got to know and trust his word, but know how to hear him. So we're going to end this service off with worship. But before you hit play, Hadassah, this is a song that we've never sang here at Kazon. But I think the words in this song speak to what I'm speaking about today, that there, God's word is true, and he's faithful through the ages. If he spoke to Abram, he'll speak to you. If he spoke to Moses, who was a murderer, and David, who was a murderer and an adulterer, he'll speak to you. If he spoke to Jacob, who was a trickster, and people who were thieves, and women who were prostitutes, and men who were violent, he'll speak to you. So I know this may be a new song, but let these words sink into your heart. Go ahead, Hadassah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are faithful, that you will speak to us, that you're the same God from age to age. You spoke then, you will speak to us now. Help us, God, to be able to hear from you because you are, you are great and you are faithful. You love your children. You want a relationship. You want to speak to us. Help us today to seek you in your word. And when we read your word, that will learn your character. And it'll help us to know when you're speaking and when you're not. Those that already have a relationship with you, God, I pray that, God, they would continue to be more disciplined in their time with you. Putting you first. You said if we seek you first, you'll provide all these other things will be added to us. Those that may be newer to the faith, God, I pray that they will begin to start these daily disciplines of, of reading your word and praying and listening to you. God, because your word says that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek after you. I pray that we will see you move in our lives. We will see these promises that you have for us come to pass because we know your voice. As we continue praying, there may be somebody in here today that you don't even have a relationship with Jesus. You don't even know who he is. Well, let me tell you really quick. He was the son, he is the son of God who willingly left heaven, came to this earth, lived a sin-free life because he knew you and I couldn't. He willingly got on a cross and became every sinful thing that you would ever do in your life. Became it. Died. A terrible death was placed in the tomb, but he did not stay dead. Three days later, he rose from the dead. And the Bible says that now anyone who calls on his name and believes in their heart that he is the risen son of God, he will wipe your past away. He will make you into a brand new person. You can be in a relationship with him. You can have his strength. You can begin hearing from him and you can begin living for him and your eternity is set. And if that's you here today and you want the Lord in your life, you want to make him the Lord of your life, not just your Savior, but your Lord, lift up your hand long enough for me to see you. Today's the day. Yes, praise God. I see a hand right here. Welcome to the family of God. Is there anybody else that today is the day for you, that your life will never be the same, that you can start a relationship with Jesus he loves you. He died for you. He rose for you because he loves you so much. Today is the day. Lift up your hand long enough for me to see you. I see another hand here. Welcome to the family of God. God is so good. Hallelujah. Well, church, we're going to all pray together because nobody at his own church prays alone. And at the end of this prayer, we're going to celebrate because two people have walked into the family of God. And God and the angels are all celebrating because of what has happened here today. So everyone repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father thank, you for me. thank you for loving me. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. And I need, a savior. I need a Savior. Thank you for sending Jesus, you for sending Jesus. To, die for my sins. to die for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead. I believe he rose from the dead. He's the Son of God. 
God. He's the Savior of the world. He's the Savior of the world. Now, Jesus, now, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. Make me brand new. Make me brand new. Thank you for giving me a new heart and a new mind. And help me, Lord, to love others and to hear you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Come on, let's celebrate his own church.